topic is retained earnings. It's in the corporate umbrella. Last week corporations, this week corporations. Again, the theme for today is retained earnings and what causes it to change. Refresh my memory. What causes retained earnings to go up? A group answer. Anybody blurt out? Net income. Net income. What causes retained earnings to go down? Net loss. Well, net loss is the obvious part of that. Dividends. Yes. I was thinking, Daniel. You know, Dividends. Dividends. Dividends causes retained earnings to go down. And that's the theme for today. It's about cash dividends and stock dividends. And I'm going to demonstrate that with two exercises, the first of which is brief exercise 14.1. It's on 6.53. While you're turning there, let me ask you a question. How about replacing the expression retained earnings with a couple of synonyms? Give me a synonym for retained. Anybody that knows what I'm trying to drive at right this minute, say kept. Give me a synonym for earnings, profits. Does kept profits mean any more to you than retained earnings does? I'm hoping that it will. And I'm hoping that you'll think about retained earnings and why they chose those words to describe this phenomenon. I need to ask you this question. I need you to understand this response. So we've been profitable. What are our choices about what to do with those profits? We have two choices. We can either pay them out in dividends. Who gets them? Stockholders. Stockholders. The owners. The stockholders. We can either pay them out or not. Now if we don't pay them out, whose are they? If they're in the business, whose are they? They're still the stockholders. These earnings belong to the stockholders either way. If we give them to the stockholders, then they're not in the business anymore, but if we keep them, what are they? Kept profits? Retained earnings. To whom do they belong? The stockholders. It's the stockholders' claim on assets. Now, last week you heard there were two parts. What the owner puts there to start with, pay in. And all the other efforts of the corporation, retained earnings, not yet paid out to the owners. Accumulating there for the owners someday. We can pay them out in dividends or not. Let's work exercise, excuse me, it's brief exercise 14.1. It says, our corporation has 80,000 shares of common stock outstanding. It declares a dollar per share cash dividend on November 1st to stockholders of record December 1st. The dividend is paid December 31st. Prepare the entries on the appropriate dates to record the declaration and payment of the cash dividend. Well, before we literally do those entries, let's name the three dates. There were three dates described in what I just read you, and they have names of significance to us. If you know the name of the first date, would you raise your hand and talk to me? Danielle? The date of declaration. This is the date of declaration, like July 4th, 1776? <laughs> that was yeah. the date of declaration, wasn't it? Yeah. What did we declare that day? Independence. 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 What did the board of directors declare this day? A dividend. A dividend. Let's talk about your trip on the way to class today. On the way to class today, you were lost in this building someplace and sat down in what you thought was the correct room and it wound up being English. You got there just in time to hear the professor say, class, today we're going to review the four types of sentences. Can you help me review the four types of sentences? Their names? The name of this kind of sentence is? Statement? Yeah, but there's another name for it. Declarative. 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 The name of this kind of sentence? Exclamatory. Exclamatory. The name of this kind of sentence? Interrogative. Interrogative. And this sentence? Yep. Imperative. Oh, Remember? It's a good thing we reviewed them, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so the board of directors met, and somebody made a motion, and they said, let's declare an $80,000 dividend. Somebody seconded it. The chair said, all for... In, all in favor, everybody said aye, it passed, and the secretary of the board had to take minutes.
What kind of sentence did he or she write? How did they punctuate it? A period. Because it was what kind of sentence? Declared. Declarative. They declared. They said. It's a stretch, but let me make the point anyway. Between debt and equity. Owing and owners. With me here? Come on, go with me. I have debt. The cost of using somebody else's money is interest. Interest expense. Interest expense is a legal obligation. Every day that passes, we owe more interest. We would say interest accrues. Yes or no? Did you understand what I just said? Mm -hmm. Yes? You were supposed to. You were supposed to know all of that. Is the same thing true with stock? What do we pay stockholders? We've been talking about it today. Is there a legal obligation to pay a dividend on a daily basis? Do, do dividends accrue like interest accrues? No. Yeah. No. Not until this moment. <coughs> now, only now, on the date of declaration, is there a legal obligation? There is not a daily legal obligation to pay a dividend. There is no such until the board of directors declares it. Do you see the difference in the obligation to pay interest and the obligation to pay a dividend? One happens all the time in a cruise and the other does not. Yes or no? Yeah. Simple little lesson I wanted you to know. The name of the second date. If you know, I need you to talk to me. Ryan? Date of record. Let's do a pun on this one. What happens on the date of record? A pun? You record. You with me, Ryan? Is that a pun? I guess. Or hominy? Is that a hominy? I Homophone? Oh let's, oh, let's just stay in accounting until we leave English now. So, date of record. What happens on the date of record? Sillyly, we say record. What do we record? What do we want to know? What are we trying to find out? What are we trying to do? If I be quiet a minute, you'll talk. Maybe. Who owns the shares? Thank you. We're trying to establish ownership. We want to know who owns the shares. Does it take a journal entry to do that? No. What it takes in accounting effort, however, is posting. So think about first semester lesson. An account receivable subsidiary ledger, sorry, an account receivable control account and an account receivable subsidiary ledger with all the customers and how much they owe us each. Well, same thing would be true with common stock. Common stock would be a control account and we'd have a subsidiary ledger, a database, and Excel spreadsheet, maybe, of all the names and addresses of the people and how many shares they own. Don't you want to know who owns your stock? Now, what about Wall Street today? Might our stock be bought and sold today, exchanging ownership? Yes, don't you think? We need some time if this is going to be the date of record, we need some time to catch up. So our stock is changing hands all these days, and whoever owns the stock this day is going to get it. So we just need time to post all these events, and we're going to stop. Those are the people that are going to get the dividend, and then we're going to go on about life and do it again another time when we've got a dividend. We want to establish ownership by posting, updating the records. The name of the third day. Nathan. The distribution. Is the name of a stock dividend, but this is a cash dividend. This is called? Yeah, uh, payment. Good. Yeah. The date of payment. Let's see what happens on each of those three dates. This is what the exercise asks us to do. I'm asking for a volunteer who would make the entry on the date of declaration for this cash dividend. Let's go faster. Debit cash dividends. Good. And credit dividends payable. Real good. How much? Um, um, 80,000. There's two ways we can come up with the 80,000. I'd like to talk about them just briefly. I'm trying to inject 
real life into this. In preparing for the board of directors meeting, some person on the staff knew there was the chance that this question was going to be asked. So he did, or she did a little research and came up with a number, wrote it on a little piece of paper, stuck it in his pocket. Went to the board of directors meeting, they're going down the agenda and sure enough it comes up and they're discussing paying a dividend. And one of the directors says, how much can we afford to pay? And looks right at that guy. He reaches in his pocket, he says, 80,000 sir, puts the little note away and they make the motion and approve it. We've done that today. That's how much we could afford, okay? Or maybe it is, we've been paying a dollar per share dividend for the last 15 years. And by golly, we're gonna pay a dollar a share dividend this year. Now, times may be tough. Maybe we can only afford 90 cents, but we're gonna cut something out someplace because we're afraid our shareholders will panic. If we only pay 90 cents this year, they might perceive us as, Oh, in trouble going bankrupt, and they may sell all their stock. Or maybe times are good. Maybe we could afford to pay a dollar twenty. But we're afraid to pay a dollar twenty this year because we're afraid they'll start expecting us to pay a dollar twenty all the time, and, and we're not sure we can afford that. So we're going to stick with the dollar. Tradition. You with me? What I just described to you was we either might work from the big number and just see how that parses out to each share or we might want to keep this per share thing that we got going here what's it going to take this time it's going to take eighty thousand dollars this time Lord, let's talk about what kinds of accounts what is cash dividends asset liability capital revenue or expense expense no, no. equity e equity is a real broad name can you narrow it down for me what, what, what do we normally call equity all first semester what do we call equity um, uh, the book called it owner's equity I called it capital you just said capital Capital. Um, new name for capital? Stockholders equity. How many parts are there? Two. What are their names? Paid in and retained. Which is this? Ah, uh, I got out of order just a minute. What's capital's normal balance? Credit. And what's cash dividends normal balance? Debit. Ooh. Explain your way out of that one. It is contra. It is indeed contra capital. Contra stockholders equity, new terminology. Mm -hmm. Contra paid in or contra retained? Neither. Ooh, or both. Both. Or maybe it is one of those. No. Neither paid in nor retained? No. What do you think, Danielle? Contra paid in or contra retained? I think it's neither. Neither. Connor? Yeah, neither. Ryan? I'm not sure. Paul? Sure. Y'all thinking? You need to be thinking. Contra paid in or contra retained, Nathan? Contrapated. Your pressure. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, I didn't hear your answer. I said I believe it was neither. Neither. <clears throat> Cash dividends reminds me of John Doe drawing. John Doe drawing was the very first contra account we ever learned. John Doe drawing was contra capital, and so is cash dividends. But cash dividends is contra. Ooh, I was about to tell you. Fernando? Paid in or retained? Can you repeat the question? <laughs> <laughs> I only ask it about 10 times. Is cash dividends contra paid in or contra retained? Yeah, it's only contra capital. Luis? It's contra retained. This is the retained chapter. At the beginning of the hour today, I ask you, how do you increase retained earnings? You said net income. How do you decrease retained earnings? You said dividends. You've answered this question in another form today, haven't you? Yes or no? It's contra retained. We're trying to find ways, this chapter, that retained earnings has changed. Net income increases it. Dividends decrease it. And here's where it's happening, right here. Cash dividends is contra retained. Laura? You with me? Mm -hmm. What kind of an account's dividends payable, Laura? Mm. Stockholders equity? No. No. Oh, liability. How'd you know? Payable. It says payable. Mm -hmm. It's a current liability. It's a liability we're going to pay very soon. Mm -hmm. So, 
One more question about cash dividends law. Is it closed? No. Danielle? Yeah. Those are the two good answers. <laughs> now line up. Everybody line up. <laughs> Somewhere. It's either yes or no. Ryan? Yes. Connor? I should have never done that for him. That's not an acceptable answer. <laughs> Is cash dividends closed? Yes. Question mark? You said yes? Yes, period. No. Yes. Yes. In which step? Help me out here, class. How many steps in closing entries are there? Four. Four. What are you closing the first step? Revenue. Come on, speak up. Revenue. No. Revenue. Yes. But I want the short name, the one we uh, learned first. Revenue. So we can do this. How, what do you close in the first step? Revenue. revenue. When you close revenue, you close it to? Income. Income. Good. Second step? Expense. I mean, expense. expense. Yes? Two? Income. Income summary. Income Third step? Income summary. Two? Drive. Uh, capital. Now, to capital is the way we learned it. But let's think about it in the full context. Let's do proprietorships, partnerships, and corporations right here. Third step. What do we close? Income summary. Income summary. For a proprietorship to? John Doe Capital. John Doe Capital was the name I was looking for. For a partnership to? Both Capital. John Doe Capital and Mary Smith Capital. Jim Brown Capital. One for every partner, ever how many there are. That's this check. That's this semester. That's on this test. Yes, we're responsible for that. Here we go, third question. Third step in closing interest, what do you close? Income summary. For a corporation to? Retained earnings. Retained earnings, that's the third time today this has come up. That's how retained earnings gets increased, right there. Third step in closing interest. What do you close in the fourth step in closing interest? Drawing. Drawing, Drawing is the answer I wanted for the moment. And what kind of an account is cash dividends, Nathan? Come for retained earnings. In which step is cash dividends closed, somebody? Fourth step. Fourth step. It's like drawing. Now, on a whim, is there somebody in the room that has their note-taking guide from first semester with you? 9.50 yesterday, nobody did. 2.20 yesterday, somebody did. Last hour, somebody did. We had a pretty thrilling event happen. Nobody has it with you? Oh, rats. You'll just have to imagine it. Do you have it in your room someplace? Your living accommodations? Mm -hmm. I, I, I dare you <laughs> to go into your, find your note-taking guide from first semester. Last hour, I put that person's on the screen. And we saw the fourth step in closing entries written way back in chapter four. And we read the fourth step and it said, transfer the balance of drawing dividends to capital retained earnings. It was there all the time. You ought to do it and see that you knew it all along. I'm just trying to connect this to prior knowledge What's lacking there may be the prior knowledge. Okay, let's make an entry on the date of record. Who told me about the date of record? Who named this one for me? I think I did. Ryan, make me an entry. Debit? You don't need to make an entry. No entry? No entry. There's no transaction. Credit something? Nope, nothing. We're only finding out who owns our stock at the data record. And it doesn't take a journal entry to do that? Nope. Does it take accounting effort to do that? Yes. Accounting effort named? Uh, posting. Posting. We need to post to the subsidiary ledger. We need to post to the stockholder's ledger. We want to know who owns the stock. Is this kind of like hired an administrative assistant? Yes. I usually get a bigger chuckle than that. Uh, Do y'all remember first semester, hired an administrator? Why does everybody remember that? They don't remember the fourth step in closing entries? <laughs> we didn't need to know hired an administrative assistant. You needed to know the fourth step in closing entries. No entry, Ryan? No entry. No entry. Post. Yeah. Establish ownership. Doesn't take a journal entry to do it. Make me an entry on the date of payment. This may be the easiest entry this week. Who's going to do it for me? Connor. 
<coughs> then we do it in payable, three thousand, and then credit card. Three good, thousand. real good. Have you posted mentally? Have you posted mentally? Have you seen this come true in the accounting system? What's the balance of dividends payable right this minute? Zero. That's the point. Good. Yes. If you've got a question about these entries, you ought to ask me right now. I've got one follow-up. We've talked all around it. I think we ought to do it. Let's make the fourth closing entry. The fourth step in closing entries would cause us to make what germ entry? If you want to volunteer and talk to me right this minute, I need your help. Laura? Debit retained earnings for 80000 and credit cash dividends 80000 Have you posted mentally? Yes. What's the balance of cash dividends right this minute? Zero. What happened to retained earnings when you made this entry? Increased. Or decreased? Increased. What's the normal balance of retained earnings? Debit. What is retained earnings? Contra, oh, yeah, no, what? <laughs> <laughs> we might have had discovery going on right now. What's the normal balance of retained earnings? Credit. Credit is correct. What happened to retained earnings when you debited it just now? Decreased. It decreased. What did dividends do to retained earnings? Decreased. They decreased, and here, here's where it plays out. That's the point. Are you with me or not? Everybody with me? Yes? Good. Cash dividends, an achievable part of this chapter. Stock dividends. We're turning up the heat a little bit. We're doing 14.3. It's on 6.55, and I absolutely love this exercise. There is a main lesson in this exercise, and there is a sub-lesson, a very important sub-lesson in this exercise. I need you to learn it all. I need you to get the whole thing. 14.3 on January 1st, 12, B Corp had a million dollars of common stock outstanding that was issued at par. It also had retained earnings of 750,000. The company issued 40,000 shares of common stock at par on July 1st and earned net income of 400,000 for the year. Journalized the declaration of a 15% stock dividend on December 10th, 12, for the following independent assumptions. One, Par is 10 and market is 18. That's the only one we'll have time to work today. If I remember, I'll give you check figures for part two at the end of the hour just before we dismiss so that you could work it again and practice it on your own and do the calculations and build your confidence. I would highly encourage you to do that. Now, let me help you with the facts of the problem. Let me help you see what they told us show you the obstacle we have before we can do what they ask us to do. Perhaps this timeline would help me describe to you what we're about to do. I've read the exercise and I'm just lifting facts out of the exercise to try to get you to see the message. It seems to me that the exercise said at the beginning of the year there was a balance in common stock of a million dollars. Are you with me right now? And see where it says that in the problem? Now, that million dollars in common stock is that beginning balance at the beginning of the timeline. In the problem, it also says at mid-year, we issued 40,000 new shares of stock. And then it asks us for the journal entry we would make near the end of the year to distribute this stock dividend, declare this stock dividend, actually. Now, it seems to me that the challenge they put before us was they have given us apples and oranges. They've made it an uneven playing field. These aren't a common denominator. Does anybody get what I'm trying to get you to see right now? Yes. I've got dollars and shares. If these were shares, I wouldn't have a problem. If these were dollars, I wouldn't have a problem. Some way, somehow, I've got to get this equal to one another so I can deal with it and combine those. And there's a couple of ways we could do it. I'm just going to choose one way. I'd like to think in shares. So my goal here is to convert this to shares. 
which gives us the opportunity to connect last week to this, last chapter to this, and talk about a skill that I'd like you to have, that you'd like to have, perhaps someday. If we take the balance of common stock, whatever it is, and divide that balance by par, we get the number of shares blank, an adjective, a word that we used last week to define numbers of shares of stock. My question to you, your challenge right this minute, is to decide whether this calculation yields the number of shares authorized, the number of shares issued, or the number of shares outstanding. I need you to think a minute. Paul, I need you to go shut both doors if you would. And make sure they're unlocked. Will you be with me right this minute and think conceptually about this process I'm trying to describe to you? If I divide the balance of common stock by par, what will I get? The number of shares authorized, issued, or outstanding? It ties to last week. I'm going to do a little show of hands vote. If we had clickers, it would be a wonderful time to do it. I need everybody to vote. It's okay to miss it. You'll learn more if you miss it. If I divide the balance of common stock by par, I get authorized. I get issued. I get outstanding. Let's talk about it. It was about 50-50. Refresh my memory about last week. When we described these, we described authorized as meaning permission. permission. Thank you. When we issued shares, why did we issue them? Or another way to say <coughs> issued, what did issued mean? Gave out. Given out. They gave us something, so we gave them something. We placed the shares in the hands of the shareholders. We gave them out. Yes, that was the main lesson last week. We issued the shares. And every time we issued the shares, we made an entry for par. Remember? Over and over and over again. The main entry last week was issuing shares at par. So we put it in this account at par when we issued them. And what did outstanding mean? <laughs> Still in the hands of the Still in the, you read so well, thank you. <laughs> At least we're moving along. Still in the hands of the shareholders. We didn't get them back. Is the calculation, the balance of common stock divided by par, authorized, issued, or outstanding? About half of you say issued. About half of you say outstanding. I say issued. That's what we did last week. When we gave them out, we accounted for them at par. That's how they became issued. They gave us something, we gave them something. We issued them. I gotta have you with me right now. Yes or no? Your body language is overwhelming. Laura? Um, why wouldn't it be issued and outstanding? Well, I'm getting to that. Okay. I'm reviewing last week still and I'm trying to make that clear. So let me ask you. What is the difference between issued and outstanding? Literally? Time of the year. No. Somebody may have mumbled it and I didn't hear you. Is it treasury stock? It is treasury stock. The difference between issued and outstanding. Issued, placed in the hands of the shareholders. Outstanding, still in the hands of the shareholders. The difference is treasury stock. Now. Dividing this by par will not give you outstanding. Dividing this by par will give you issued. How can I get from issued to outstanding? If I, let's do the math. Let's take the million and let's divide the million by par. What was par? Ten. $10. A million divided by $10 is 100,000 shares that are authorized, issued, or outstanding. Issued. Issued. Now. Did I tell you at the beginning of this exercise, I love this exercise? Mm -hmm. For this reason. Because I get to teach you this. Because they didn't give us all the facts. They made us work, work for it. But it's fault. The authors left treasury stock in the previous chapter. 
Treasury stock is a corporation's deal, and it should have spilled on, into both the chapters. We needed at least one exercise, at least one homework problem, that we could talk about Treasury stock in the facts of the problem. How much Treasury stock's in this problem? What does this problem say about Treasury stock? Mm -hmm. It's not mentioned. Therefore, it must have been zero. Don't they have an obligation to tell us if they're Treasury shares? So here's what I have to do. I have to take the number of shares issued, subtract out the Treasury stock, because I'm trying to get the number of shares outstanding, because last week we talked about which of these three adjectives was the best description for having rights. That's the reason I told you the story last week for this moment. Which of these is the best adjective to describe shares of stock that can vote or share in earnings or have the preemptive right or share in assets at liquidation? Authorized, issued, or outstanding? Which shares have rights? Outstanding shares have rights. The shares that we took back that we're storing in the sh safe can't vote. They don't get a dividend. It's shares that are in the hands of the shareholders that can vote and get a dividend. And that's why we're talking about it right this minute. It's outstanding shares that have rights. Are you with me or not? Now, one more time. I think the author should have allowed Treasury shares to come to this chapter to give us something to do. And because they didn't, I have to overteach it like today, or I made up a handout that I'm going to use in the Saturday review. So here's another plug for the Saturday review. You ought to go online and tell me what time you want it, what time the most people can show up. And we're gonna do lots of things, but one of the things we're going to do is a handout where treasury stock is woven all through it. It affects a cash dividend, it affects a stock dividend, and so forth. And it will be a good experience for you if you can come. Do you have a question about what we've just determined? That was the sub-lesson in this exercise. The main lesson is to calculate the stock dividend, but we needed to know this number in order to do so. I'm ready to substitute that number for this one. Remember the uneven playing field, apples and oranges? Not a common denominator problem we had, dollars and shares. Now we can say there are 100,000 shares, and I've got shares and shares, and we can proceed if you're with me. Say you're with me. 100,000 shares at the beginning plus the 40,000 shares that we issued at mid-year means that at the time we declare this stock dividend, there are 140,000 shares issued. There are none in the treasury. There must be 140,000 shares outstanding. The stock dividend we're about to declare starts with those 140,000 old shares. We're going to multiply that by the percentage of dividend the board of directors declared. Refresh my memory. What percent was that? It was 15%. I need you to do the math. What is 140,000 times 15% someone? 21,000. You did in your head, Connor. You did it before this. You knew where we were going. You're ahead of me, Connor. I love it when you're ahead of me, Connor. 21,000 new shares are going to be issued. Now, I need to do three things with those shares. I'm going to multiply those 21,000 new shares that I'm going to issue by, look up at the screen a second, market, par, and the excess. I need to know the amount of market per share. Can you say that number to me? Market in the problem was stated to be 18. What's par? 10. Therefore, the excess must be 8. Now, do the math. What is 21,000 times 18, anybody? Nathan? $378,000, auditors. That's correct. Good. What is 21,000 times 10, anyone? Everyone in your head? 21,000 times 10 is 210,000. 21,000 shares times 8, anybody? 168,000. I need you to be right here. This is one of the main messages. This is 
how you calculate a stock dividend. Now there's a couple of ways you can do it. This is my favorite way to do it. I'd encourage you to do it this way. I think you make better sense out of it when you try to do it the way you've seen it demonstrated. And I repeat, I've got a checkbook figure in a minute for these calculations for the second part of this exercise that we're not going to do. Remind me at the end and I'll let you know those numbers. So normally, if I ask you to make a journal entry, we usually give the account titles and then the amounts. Could I have your attention on the screen just a second? Let me show you a point I'm trying to make. All of this work that we've just done affects the journal entry to declare a stock dividend how. Do you see what I see? What we just did was make some calculations that become the amounts of the journal entry. And by the way, it is the market price of the stock that is the driving force here. It is market that is causing us to do all of this. It is market that's reducing retained earnings. It's market that's increasing the paid in accounts. I need your help in matching these appropriate amounts with account names. What names shall be given each of these? If you're willing to talk to me, raise your hand and name one at a time. You want to start? Sure. Name one. Stock dividend. The first one, the 378,000, should be stock dividends. The second one is? Laura? Stock dividends distributable. What a weird name. Stock dividends distributable must be the weirdest name in principles of accounting. One or two. And this credit, anybody? Somebody. Danielle? Uh, paid in excess of par. Paid in capital in excess of par. When that hits, that should make this unusual entry start looking usual. When did you do something similar to that last chapter? What were you doing when that happened? You were issuing stock. It didn't look like this, but you were issuing stock. Yes? Well, ultimately, that's where we're going here. And this is just a temporary solution to the long-term problem we're trying to solve. Let's talk about these three accounts and their nature. Ryan, what kind of an account is stock dividends? Contra retained earnings. Where have I heard that before? With cash dividends. I mean, not cash dividends. That is, well, yeah, it is, that is correct. Stock dividends and cash dividends are similar in that respect. And they remind me of an account before that that was Contra Capital. Uh, Treasury 7. No. Yes, that is, but that's oh, not what no, it reminds John, me of. John. John Doe drawing, cash dividends, and stock dividends are all Contra Capital for about the same reason. And they all get closed in which step of closing interest? The fourth. The fourth. Stock dividends is contra stockholders' equity, contra retained earnings. How about stock dividends distributable, Laura? You were the one that suggested that one. What is it? Asset liability, capital revenue expense. Liability. That's the best wrong answer. I was so hoping. Yesterday, there was a pause. I couldn't get the student to say it. And I was literally praying, oh, Lord, please let her say liability. <laughs> I didn't have time. You blurted it right on out today, Laura. <laughs> Tell me, Laura, if it had been a liability, don't you think we would have named it stock dividends payable? Doesn't that make sense to you, class? Mm -hmm. In fact, you did cash dividends payable a minute ago and knew it was a liability because it had payable. Wasn't that you? Yeah. Is this a liability, class? It's not. And we got that one out of the way. Thank you very much for helping us out. It's not a liability, but it is an obligation. Class, do you remember when I had the calculation up here a minute ago and we had adjectives to, to describe the three amounts? Laura, what was that 210,000? That 210,000 had which adjective beside it? Market, par, excess. Which par. was it? Ah, par. That ought to talk to you. So if this is at par, what does that suggest? It's stockholder. This account. must be some sort of stock account. Literally, these are shares of stock waiting to be issued. So there are some shares issued in the hands of the shareholders. Maybe on another circumstance, there are some shares we bought back, treasury shares, in a pile in the safe with a label on it. These are treasury shares. But there's a box of shares that have never been issued. 
And on the date of record, we literally went into that box and counted out enough and put those over in another pile and labeled them. These are shares waiting to be issued. This is capital. Stockholders' equity. There's some adjectives we could put in front of it. Laura, is it contra? No. What's its balance? Credit. Is it contra? No. It's not. Don't fall for that. It is not contra capital. It is capital. These are shares of stock waiting to be issued. So we could say this is a temporary paid-in stockholders equity account. There's just some adjectives. Temporary paid in stockholders equity account. Now I think you understand the stockholders equity part. It's paid in, it's going to become stock, it's not stock yet. Are you gonna let them vote? Are you gonna let them have a cash dividend right now? No, they're not issued to anybody yet, we're holding them. We're trying to process this and post up until the date of record so we can decide who gets these shares. This is temporary paid in stockholders equity. So much so that if you lost your way on your way to class today and figured out that you didn't belong in this English class and you slipped out when the professor wasn't watching, you wound up in art just in time to hear the professor say, your assignment for today is to personify stock dividends distributable. You can use any medium you like. Use clay or watercolors or pastels, or, but just make me something that reminds me of Stock dividends distributable. Well, let me translate that. Stock dividends distributable reminds me of two of God's creatures. And if we had a little more time, I'd stand here until you came up with them. In the interest of time, I'm going to tell you those two. Stock dividends distributable reminds me of a caterpillar. Or a tadpole. Stock dividends distributable is a temporary paid-in stockholders' equity account. On the date of record, you don't make an entry. Help me issue these shares of stock. Ryan? You're going to debit stock dividends distributable and credit fund stock. How much, Ryan? For $210,000. Class, you hurt me when you don't know this entry. This one's easier than this one. This one may be the hardest entry this week. Granted. Doesn't mean you can't achieve it. It just deserves some of your focus. Now, if you can get this entry right, this entry ought to be easier. It is this par amount that is becoming permanent equity. This is issue the shares. We didn't know who needed them, who was to get them in this case. Now we know. We don't need that temporary account anymore. We're issuing the stock. A temporary paid-in stockholders equity account becomes a permanent one in this entry. So on your way to class today, you stopped in in English for a few minutes and you slipped out and you scooted into art and realized you were in the wrong place and when the professor wasn't looking, you slipped out and came to this class. Oops, sorry. On your way to this class, you turned into biology. You sat down at the back of the room in the biology class just in time to hear the professor ask, class? What is the scientific name of this entry? Class, what is the scientific name of this entry? Looking back. No, that's not too scientific. <laughs> the scientific name of this entry? Come on, somebody can do this. Do I need to remind you what this account reminds me of? Oh. Metamorphosis. The scientific name of this entry, Ryan? Metamorphosis. Metamorphosis. Ooh, has he gone off the deep end this time? Look here. A tadpole became a frog. A caterpillar became a butterfly. A temporary paid-in stockholder's equity account became permanent equity. And it was all at the market price of the stock. Market was the driving force here. I have to tell you, one time I was doing this metamorphosis thing, and I accidentally said, wasn't aware that I said, a tadpole became a butterfly. A caterpillar 
became a frog. And I turned back around thinking I said it correctly, and a student raised their hand and said, Mr. Greg, that's not metamorphosis. That's a miracle. Yeah. And I'd have to agree. Did you learn something today? Mm -hmm. yes. You have a ton of takeaways today. You need to practice what you know. You need to do this again. And I promised you, I'd give you some check figures before you fold your notes up. If you want those three numbers for the second part of this, we're not working this in class or at the review. There's just some numbers if you wanted to take the time to let this problem get cold and try to work it again. It'd be good for you to work it out and come up with that as, for practice. Thank you for helping me out today. Have a good day.